Right. Yeah. Well, you want to walk them through there? For sure. Three three? Yeah. Okay, close your eyes. Uh, one, two, three. All right, it's me. That's me. God commands all men and women everywhere to repent of all sin. The Lord Jesus Christ has manifested into this world to destroy the works of the devil, the works of the devil in our lives. And those of us who have been saved by his amazing, powerful blood that was shed on that cross no longer have the works of the devil. And we are calling you today through our God who is calling you to repent of this sin, sins that entail things such as unbelief, adultery, fornication, idolatry, lying, stealing, drunkenness, revelry, extortion, things that God is not pleased with. You see, God, contrary to popular opinion, does not accept everyone just the way that they are. God is not an all-inclusive, all-accepting, mamsy-pamsy, make you feel good, Burger King have it your way, Barbie girl be who you want to be type of God. He is, a, he, he is a very strict, serious God. He holds people accountable. He is a just judge. You see, in this world, we have people who are called judges in our court system, and they are supposed to be upheld to a righteous judgment in the sense of if you do something wrong, none of the good things that you do will get you out of that wrong deed. You will still have to pay restitutions for what you've done. And that's just in this physical world. How much more so will the righteous God of the universe hold you accountable to the things that you do in this world? The Bible says that if we walk in the spirit, we will cease to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Are you walking in the spirit today? Or are you walking in the flesh? Are you submitting yourselves to be ser servants of the flesh, continuing to do that which God is displeased with? Or are you submitting yourself to the Spirit and crucifying your flesh daily? You see, the cross, it's not just a necklace you put on. It's not just a tattoo with someone's name on it. It's not just something that you look at to feel good. The cross is an instrument of death. When you go to the cross, you die. You don't go to the cross and say, hey, uh, I know you've nailed me to this cross, but let me just get down and go get something to eat real quick. When you get nailed to the cross, you're going to die. And so the Bible says we must crucify ourselves daily. It's talking about overcoming temptations, denying the things that you want to do in order to do the things which God has called you to do. And what, who is this God that I'm referring to? This God I'm referring to is not man's created God, something that they look up to because it makes them feel better or gets them out of all the wrong things that they do without having to stop doing them. This God I'm talking about is not Allah of Islam. It's not Buddha. It's not any of the millions of gods of Hinduism. It's not any of the fake Christian gods like the God of Mormonism who lives on some planet far away having spiritual babies for eternity. It's not the God of uh, the Jehovah's Witness who is a created being. It's the God of the universe. You know, maybe you've heard of him, created every single thing you see in this universe, the sun, the moon, the stars, the body you have, the earth you walk on, the air you breathe, the light that you see the, the universe around you with. This God created all of it. And he is a personal God because he personally chose to create you. And he wants to have a personal relationship with you. However, your sin is separating you from this God. Your sin is disgusting to this God. He despises it. See, this God, he doesn't just accept sinners. God is only going to allow ex-sinners into his kingdom, people who no longer practice sin. You see, this, the sins that people do in this world are so disgusting in the eyes of God that there has to be something done to get rid of them. And the Bible says, the life is in the blood and that there should be blood shed in order to uh, atone for sin. And Jesus Christ is that substitutionary atonement, that 
that blood that was shed on that cross is able to save you from all of your sin. All of it. It doesn't matter how big or small the sin in your life that you've committed in the past or maybe even presently are doing. And you can have it washed clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. His blood cleanses us of all sin. Not some, not most, all sin. But the Bible says it this way. 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. And by this we do know that we know Jesus, if we keep His commandments. He who says, I know Jesus, but does not keep His commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. My friends, are you lying to yourselves today? Are you calling yourself a Christian, but still practicing lawlessness? Are you still walking in iniquity? How do you know if you're really a born again Christian? What does it really mean to be born again? Well, it means to have a spiritual birth. Just as Jesus spoke in John chapter three, what is born of the flesh is flesh. And what is born of the spirit is spirit. Jesus is saying, in order to be born again, you must have a spiritual birth. You must have a change of heart. You must have humble, childlike faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're calling you today to repent of all your sins, to become obedient to the one true living God who has shed his blood for you, who has made a new testament. He, he's, he's done all of this with you in mind. Jesus Christ died to save you, to set you free from sin. But in order to have that sanctification, that salvation that is offered to you, it's going to cost you something. You have to be willing to give up all of your sin. And you can't stop doing it on your own. We're not out here saying that we stopped sinning on our own. We're telling you that Jesus Christ's sacrifice is what gives us the ability to overcome sin. You see, the Bible says all sin starts with a temptation. And that temptation, once it's been planted, if you water it, it leads to sin. And that sin yields the fruit of death. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, that no temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to man. But God is faithful and he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can handle. But with every temptation, he can provide to you, he will provide to you a means of escape so that you are able to bear it. My friends, do not be deceived by this man-made doctrine that we're all sinners, that we all sin every day in thought, word, and deed, that it's impossible to overcome sin in this life, that we're all sinners. It's not true. The Bible nowhere says that we're all sinners. The Bible says that we can become born again and washed clean and made new, and that we can no longer be sinners, but we can be saints, holy saints, doing that which pleases the Lord, living in righteousness and obedience to Him. God cares about you, my friends. The Bible says in Romans chapter five, starting at verse six, in due time, while we were yet without strength, Christ died for the ungodly, that for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And, and notice it says were, were still sinners. Because when you come to the cross and you truly walk through that cross, you truly nail yourself up onto that cross and, and you die to yourself and you're born again, you cease to do evil and you learn to do good. You cleanse yourself in the sight of the Lord. See the book of James chapter four, starting at verse four says, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Do you think that the spirit in us lusteth to envy? Do you think the scriptures say in vain that the spirit in us lusteth to envy? But God gives more grace. It is written that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Rebuke the, rebuke the devil, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn. Let your laughter be turned to tears and your joy into gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. My friends, God is calling you to be humble today. See, God despises pride. The Bible says that pride comes before destruction 
and a haughty spirit before a fall. The Bible says that God hates a proud look. He hates a proud look. God is resisting the proud every day. But if you are willing to truly humble yourself, to truly give up the life that you want, to have the life that God offers you, you will have nothing but joy, my friends. I tell you today that every time I have ever sinned, I have always regretted it. I've always regretted sin, every single time. There's never been a single lie that I told that I enjoyed or did not regret. But I'll tell you something I have never regretted. I have never regretted being obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. I have never regretted it and I will never regret it. It's the most fulfilling possible thing that you can do with your life. Submitting yourself in every aspect, every single thought, every single word, and every single deed. Giving it all to the Lord Jesus Christ. See, Jesus truly is worthy, my friends. Nothing else is worthy. There's no sin that's worthy of your time, effort, energy, admiration, honor, praise, and glory. None of it. It all leads to death. All of it is passing away. Bible says that the flesh is passing away, but the spirit brings life, life everlasting. Don't you know, my friends, that if you submit yourselves to sin, it leads to death. But if you submit yourselves to obedience, it leads to righteousness. Jesus said that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Don't you want abundant life out here today, my friends? Think of all the pain, all the suffering, all the torment you felt in this, this life alone. Think about the loss of the family members you've lost in this life, or the, the destruction of friendships and relationships that you've gone through, or even just physical pain when you've broken bones or tripped and fallen and haven't have bruises or been beaten up. All this, this darkness in the world that you've experienced is nothing in comparison to what hell is gonna be like. And don't you know that Jesus Christ came and suffered and died to give you a way out of all of that? To give you a way out of all of that. Think about who this man Jesus really was and really is today. He is alive, he rose from the dead. My friends, who do you know who has risen from the dead? Buddha didn't rise from the dead. Siddhartha Garma, he ate some really bad stew and died. He's still dead to this day. Muhammad, he died. He was poisoned also and he died and he's still dead to this day. But Jesus Christ rose from the dead. It is the year 2024. After the death of Jesus, yes, AD doesn't mean after death, it means the year of our Lord in Latin, but who is our Lord? Jesus. He changed history, my friends. He literally changed the, the direction of human history because he wrote the direction of human history. He created humans, stepped down into the world, allowed humans to kill him, laid down his life willingly, to bring you into salvation. And what are you doing with that gift that has been offered to you? Have you truly sat down and thought about what it cost our God to bring us back to him? Because if you did, there's no way you would continue sinning against him. Think about it like this. You have loved ones. You have people that you care about in this world. Maybe it's your mother. Maybe it's your father. Maybe it's your grandparents. Maybe it's your significant other. Maybe it's your own children. Maybe it's your best friend. You have people that you would give your life for. But would you die for a murderer? Would you die for a racist? Would you die for somebody who is wicked and vile? Because Jesus died for his enemies, my friends. Jesus died for those who are mocking him on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus died loving his enemies. Can you say the same about yourself today? Have we out here become your enemies because we tell you the truth? We care about your souls, my friends. We love you. We want you to become born again. We want you to have fullness of joy, newness of life, walking in the spirit, not fulfilling the lusts of your flesh and your former ignorance, but walking in obedience to the one who loved you first. The Bible says that Jesus is the first fruit. He came back from the dead. He rose from the dead. He's the first fruit. And just as he rose from the dead, he will do the same for you if you're willing to humble yourself. The Bible says, oh death, where is your sting? Oh Hades, where is your victory? Don't you know, my friends, that you can have victory over death, over temptation, over sin, over the devil? You can literally have victory in this life, right here, right now. You can walk as a conqueror. You can be victorious. 
I tell you today, my friends, there is a spiritual battle going on for your life. There are powers that are in high places in this world that are seeking after your destruction. But Jesus Christ is above those powers. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And He died to save you. He died to reconcile you back to the Father. You see, my friends, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said to Thomas, blessed are those who have not seen and yet still believe. He said that Thomas was blessed because he saw and believed. But there's, those who do not see Jesus and believe are more blessed. Don't you want to have blessings in this life? Don't you want to have the ability to overcome all the sadness, all the anger, all of the depression that comes along with the bad things that happen in this life? Because Jesus, he overcame them all. He was tempted at all points, just like you and I. Yet he was without sin, completely without sin. And the Bible says, if we say that we have fellowship with him, we ought to walk as he walked. Jesus walked righteous. He walked holy. He walked perfect. And he is offering to you, my friends, today, the exact same opportunity. Imagine, imagine being able to say no every time your flesh says orgasm, you say no. Every time your flesh says nicotine, you say no. Every time your flesh says lie, you say no. And you tell the truth. Every time your flesh says something bad, you say no and you overcome. My friends, this is offered to you today. And oh, what an amazing love it is that God has bestowed upon us, that we can be called the children of God. We can be called the, the, the sons and daughters of the most high living God. Think about that kind of a love. Think about that kind of a amazing, beautiful love that God has offered to you today, my friends. It is offered to you today to, that you can become born again and saved from the anger and hatred you have against God in your hearts today. See, the Bible says that in the last days, scoffers and mockers would come, being ignorant to the creation of God and to the waters that destroyed the world thereof. And to this day, people are still ignorant and they're mocking the word of God and they're actually fulfilling prophecy in scripture when they do that. They literally are. And you can flip us the bird, you can mock us and laugh and record with your cell phones. None of those things are gonna be beneficial to you in the day of judgment. In fact, those things will be used against you in the day of judgment. Have you ever heard your Miranda rights here in America? Anything you say or do can and will be used against you? Well, guess what? God is the same. Anything that you say and do in this life can and will be used against you on the day of judgment. If you're not willing to humble yourselves and submit yourselves to God. See, there's coming a day, my friends, when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. It is either gonna be today that you do it or at the end of your life when you do it. You might as well submit now and do it today while it's benefiting you. Because if you wait until it's too late and you die in your sin, that bowing and that confessing will not save you from eternal torment. God has designed vessels of wrath for those who go against his word, those who do not submit themselves. This is a body that will be able to withstand everlasting fire, everlasting torment. It's not gonna fade. It's not gonna go away. It's not just gonna be you die and go into nothing. It's not just gonna be you die and you're separated from God. It's not just gonna be you die and that's it. If you die in sin, you will be everlasting tormented, tormented forever and ever. It will never end. But there's hope, there's hope, my friends. And the hope is this, that Jesus loved you enough to die for you on the cross. He died for you because he loved you first, because he made you. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows about everything you've ever thought, everything you've ever said, and everything you've ever done. And you're gonna have to answer to him for all of those things. All authority has been given to this man named Jesus Christ. And he died and rose again on the third day to bring you back into being right with the Father to have all of your sins remitted, to have your account washed clean. Don't you know this, my friends, that this God that created this universe has love for you. But what is the love of God? Is the love of God just accepting everyone the way they are? Is God's love accepting homosexuals and rapists and murderers and pedophiles and liars and thieves and covetous people? No, the love of God does not just accept people the way they are. The Bible says this, 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grieving. They're not grievous. They're not burdensome. See, keeping God's commandments and obeying them is not a burden to those who truly love God. 
When God says jump, I ask how high. When God says go, I obey and go. I ask him where, how far. And that's the heart that God is looking for. God is not seeking after hearts of pride, hearts that are stubborn, hardened hearts that want to do their own thing, rebellious hearts that seek their own desires and own pleasures. God is seeking after humble hearts. And without humility, you will not make it into the kingdom, my friends. Jesus said in Luke chapter 14, verse 26, if any man wishes to come after me and he does not hate his father and mother, brother and sister, son and daughter, wife, and even his very own life also, he is not worthy to be my disciple. Are you willing to love Jesus more than your own family today, my friends? Are you willing to love Jesus more than all of the desires in your life right now? Because if you're not, you're not worthy to be his disciple. He also said, if you put your hand on the plow and you look backwards, you're not fit for the kingdom. My friends, you must persevere. You must endure. You must run the race. And I pray you'll do that today, my friends. We care about you. We're out here because we love you. Yes, we are judging sinners. The Bible calls us to do so. And you make judgments every day too. Judging is not bad inherently. You make judgments when you decide what kind of a car you're gonna buy. When you decide what kind of courses you're gonna take at this college. Those are all judgments. And I'm sure that you would judge somebody if they killed your family member or if they drove drunk. You would make a judgment on that too. The Bible says how to judge, not not to do it. Jesus commands us in John 7, 24, judge with righteous judgment. My friends, we care about you today and we're using righteous judgment to help you determine whether or not you are saved. Because if you're not saved and you die, it is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of this God with all that sin on your heart, my friends. It's not a game. It's not a joke. It's not just something we do. We're out here because we genuinely love your souls. We want you to be saved, my friends. Please repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today. Well, there's still time. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Do you want to come talk and have a conversation? That's not true. That's not true. Turn to Jesus. He loves you guys. He died for you on the cross. I suppose I can stand out there still, right? The Bible says, you can stand where you want, bro. Hey, what about passing out tracks? You should be able to pass the tracks too. And after this, the I'm just gonna do it. So after you die, I get the tracks, you'll bro. stand in judgment, and God is going to judge your, your life based on how you lived it in this world. Most of you, not all of you, know that God exists. And you know that Good news of Jesus, my friend. God bless. One, one, two, my friend. God bless. What's right and what's wrong. God gave you this 
conscience as a light. Good news of Jesus. Today. And many of you have seared your conscience. You've done what is wrong, what's against God, not giving him the glory that he's due. Good news of Jesus. says that it's appointed a man once to die, and after this the judgment. So after you die, for instance, we're going to stand in judgment, and God is going to judge your life based off of all the sin you've done in your lifetime. The Bible says, do not be deceived, the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So if you're unrighteous, you're Good news of Jesus, sin, my friend. you're living in fornication, idolatry, pornography. Good news of Jesus, my friend. Good news of Jesus Christ, man. Good news of Jesus, my friend. Good news of Jesus, ma'am. Good news of Jesus. Good news of Jesus. Many professing Christians, this is going to be the word that Jesus will speak to you on that day. He'll say, many will come to you saying, Lord, Lord, have we not done many wonderful works in thy name? Cast out devils in thy name. Good news of Jesus. Good news of Jesus. And then he will say to them, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never Good news of Jesus. So you have an option today. Good news of Jesus Christ. Either depart from iniquity or we have to depart from Jesus Christ. Good news of Jesus Christ. Good news of Jesus. Good news of Jesus Christ. Good news of Jesus, sir. God bless. I got a bunch of tracks. Amen. There you go. Good news of Jesus. Good news of Jesus, my friend. Uh, not without Christ. Good news of Jesus. All right. Good news of Jesus, sir. Good news of Jesus Christ. Not without Christ, you're not. Good news of Jesus. Good news of Jesus Christ, ma'am. Okay. God bless. Good news of Jesus. Good news of Jesus. Pretty good. Are you with Georgia State University? No, sir. Okay, you have to be. That's how it is. You have to be in that in the free speech area. No, sir. I have the right to be here. I have the right to stand wherever I want. I wasn't obeying the word of God. I was doing all manners of wicked things. Good news of Jesus. Good news of Jesus. God bless. Good news of Jesus. Good news of Jesus Christ. He's definitely about to call somebody. Just saying. Good news of Jesus. Good news of Jesus Christ. God bless. Good news of Jesus. Good news of Jesus Christ, my friend. Good news of Jesus. God bless. Good news of Jesus Christ. Good news of Jesus Christ. Good news of Jesus, Good news of Jesus my friend. Good news of Jesus, my friend. Oh, my goodness. The Bible says, he who sins is a slave of sin. And a slave will not abide forever. But he who the Son sets free shall be free indeed. Yes, as you abide in sin, you're a slave. 
your sin. You're a slave. Good news of Jesus flesh. Christ, ma'am. You're a slave to the flesh. And you, don't you know the Bible says Good news of Jesus Christ? He who lives after the flesh will die. Amen. But if you put to death. Yes, amen. The Hallelujah. Spirit, Good news of Jesus, my friend. Preach it. God bless. You, to, you, you a Christian? Yeah, my name is Michael. Uh, the Archangel Michael. So yeah, I'm Christian. Christian. Right, I didn't catch that. What did you say? My name is Michael. I'm, like, my, I'm named after the Archangel. Michael. Oh, you're named after the Archangel Michael? Yeah, I go Praise to church God. every Sunday. I go to Greenwich Church in uh, Greenwich County. So, so yeah. do you know that you're saved? Like, how do you know if you've been born again? I mean, I got baptized after a traumatic experience in my life. Well, we know we know that baptism doesn't save, right? Baptism yeah, doesn't make you born again. God, right? You got to make sure God is in control, right? God yeah. depends on everything. Okay, Michael. Yeah. Oh, re really, the way to know that you're saved is if, if you're walking in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because how can we say that we trust somebody and believe them, but we don't do what they say, right? Well, I always just say, like, whatever happens, God is in control. Yeah. And I'm not, like, downplaying your, your, your testimony. Yeah. Like, baptism is important. Don't get me wrong. But it doesn't save you. It doesn't make you born again. It doesn't remit your sins. Like, the only way to be, have your sins remitted, to give them up, and to be saved and born again is to put your humble childlike faith in Jesus Christ. In fact, without doing that, really there is no salvation, right? In my life, I pray to, pray to read the Bible. I always say Amen. whatever happens today is God's will. Amen. I'll take you at your word, Michael. It's good right. to meet you. God bless you. God bless you. What's your name? Yeah, Paul. Paul Michael. Of course it would be, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah Michael, it's it good to talk to you. I'll, I'll definitely pray for you, okay? Thank you. I'll pray for you, too. Yeah, read, that, read that card, man. It's got some great information on it, okay? All right. Have a good day, man. You too. God bless. God bless. God bless. desires you heed that desire that's not freedom that's slavery but jesus came to set you free truly free to do what is right to do what he, he desires you guys know the lord jesus christ god is not Slam, brother. Slam, brother. i don't know what that means to perish, but that all might come to repentance jesus says this he who sins is of the devil for the devil has sinned since the beginning we're not all children of God. Contrary to popular belief, not everyone is a child of God. You know, when you see a, a murderer on TV who goes and murders people, that is not a child of God. That's a child of the devil. Because the devil has sinned since the beginning. For this reason, the Son of God is manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. The, the, the works of the devil to get you to sin, to get you to stay in your sin, and to get you to die in your sin. For the Bible says in John 10, 10, the thief comes not, to, not but to steal, kill, and destroy. So you need to heed to the word of God in your life and forsake your idolatry. Whatever in your life is causing you to not heed the word of God is an idol. There's nothing more than an idol. You need to seek the word of God today in your hand. Draw near to him with your heart. Draw near to him. Don't get so if some of you are professing Christians, don't just honor him with your, your mouth and, and with your lips, but actually draw near to him, because Jesus is not fooled by your mouth profession. You know, you're not blessed. If you if you hear the word of God and don't do it, the Bible says you're like a foolish man that, that is building his house on the sand, but you need to build your house on the rock of Christ, the rock, the solid foundation, and not in sinking sand. Because when the storms of judgment come on your life, your house is going to fall. It's going to be a great fall to me. Oh, friends, you need to turn to the living God. Seek him while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Amen. Amen. How are you doing? You know the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend? It's all, it just takes a moment of faith. Seeing yourself in truth. That you've already broken God's law. You've already committed sins against him. The Bible says all have sinned and all fall short of God's glory. You know, and the wages of sin. Yeah, death. How you doing? I'm great. How you doing? Blessed and highly favored and better than I deserve by the grace of God. So I'm Mark Smith. I'm here with George State University. Okay. Um, so you two guys are perfectly fine. So we have a designated area for you guys. To is this a public campus, sir? It is. Okay. So my taxpayer money goes to fund this campus, correct? Listen, look. I understand. I ain't trying to have no issues. Right. I'm just trying to tell you from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. 
you have an area of the free speech and this specific area you need permits and other stuff from the building managers to be here your designated area where you were standing at the last two times i walked by here yeah. is perfectly fine mm -hmm. again we're not having any issues and i'm not doing the back and forth about what's what you what will happen if i what will happen if you i do not move you have let's just cut to the chase sir what will happen if i do not move I'm trying to give you respect and not let you waste your breath because I, I'm, so I understand the, the laws. I, I've been the, here many what's, times. What's the question? What's going on? Just if, if I stay right here and do not move, what will happen? Simple question. Are you, are you, just, you just standing here? Yeah, I'm just standing here. I was handing out tracks, but I ran out. Okay, but you're not doing no talking. You're just standing here. No, I'm talking to people. Yeah, if they walk past, I say, hi, how are you doing? Do you know Jesus? I'll talk to them, yeah. Talk to a few people. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I'm not trying to come against you guys, but I know my rights. This is a legal, it's, it's a public campus, so legally I can go anywhere on this campus. Anywhere I want. I mean, that's the way it works. Yeah. Yes, that's true. I mean, I wouldn't go in classrooms, but on the walkways in this area, yeah, I could walk anywhere I want. Now, I'm not using amplified speech. I'm not using any sort of like, I'm just standing here with a sign. I'm not doing anything. I, I didn't ask you what you're talking to. You said, no, yeah. Are you talking to people? Talking yeah, I am talking to people. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Of course. So, what he's doing, you have to be over there. We're not doing that, right? I'm not preaching out loud. I'm just talking to people so privately. Listen to yeah. listen my question. Listen to you, not listen to me. I answered you, sir, twice. Okay, but you're not, no, you did not. Yes, I did. You, you listen to or you're not listening to understand? That's not correct. Sir, you just falsely accused me. Okay, I answered your question twice. If the answer was not sufficient, I can reword it for you. I have okay, talked yes. to people, yes. Okay, good. Okay. So am I legal to continue doing what I'm doing, sir? Yeah. I'll just, cool. I'm sitting here with you. Amen. That's fine. Y'all can stand here just like I can. I have no problems with y'all. I just, I know my rights. Y'all turn to Jesus. Y'all know the Lord Jesus Christ? You know the Lord Jesus Christ, ma'am? God bless. You know the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend? No. Yes, you must repent. Got to repent and turn to him. Or you will likewise perish. You know, Jesus gives many warnings in the scripture. He gives many warnings to flee from sin. He says, if your eye causes you to sin, to pluck it out. Man. For it's better for you to enter into life with one eye than for you to be cast into hell with both your eyes. He says, if your hand causes you to sin, to cut it off. For it's better for you to enter into life made with one hand. Do you guys know the Lord Jesus Christ? Sorry? Y'all know the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, we do. Praise God. Amen. You know the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend? Good to see you again. How you doing? Good to see you again, man. You don't remember me? We talked last time. God bless. How are you been? You're evil? Why are you still evil, man? But you can be saved from that, though. But do you know an evil thought isn't necessarily sin? Like, it could just be the enemy whispering in your ears, man. You know that. Just because you have a thought doesn't mean you can't hold it captive. Colossians talks about holding every thought captive to Christ. I get thoughts in my head, too, but you know what? I immediately put them in handcuffs, just like these guys do to bad guys, right? I take my thought and I put it in handcuffs. Hold it captive to Christ. Give it to him. Lay it at his feet. You know? It's like the love of God is a burning, consuming fire, man. It can, it can cleanse you of all the hay and stubble and leave nothing but the precious metals behind. The jewels. But you don't ever think about the reality of like what it would be after. Like, if you're, like, let's say it's true. Sure. Like, in, cause, you know, from my perspective. But to those like, who are being saved in the power of God, yes, you must humble you yourself. Go to heaven to like, today, and God is there and he's good and he's kind. Yeah. And don't he's just as you mm -hmm. leave him to Yep. You don't ever God. worry or think about like, man, everyone else is burning in hell. So the Bible talks about that. It says that there's going to come a day when God is going to throw all the wicked evildoers into hell 
And all of us, uh, all of us who have been repenting and living holy and have submitted That's our lives. Thing, well, hear me out, you know, let me finish. The, all of us who have repented and have decided to submit our lives to God and lived righteously according to his standard, he will wipe our tears away. So watching our brother or our sister or our mother or our father or our best friend or somebody we met on the streets who we ended up having a friendship with go to hell, it's gonna cause us to cry. It's gonna be grieving to us, but God is gonna wipe our tears away. Those people have made their choice. The gospel has been presented, because remember the Bible says that the last day will not come till the gospel has been presented to the whole world. So everybody's gonna hear this gospel and it's gonna be up to them whether they submit to God or not. And if they don't submit to God and they go to hell, whose fault is it? Is it God's fault that he's being just and giving them what he told them that they would deserve if they didn't repent? They're choosing it. You don't find that somewhat unjust in its nature? Not at nature? all, no. You don't find, like, How so? not at all? How so? Because it's to burn someone into hell for eternity. But they're choosing it. That's the thing, right? The freedom of choice doesn't just mean you get to do whatever you want. It means that you get to be held accountable for doing whatever you want. There's always, and, and think about this, right? God is everlasting. He's eternal, always has been, always will be. So if you sin against an eternal God, would it not yield an eternal consequence? If God is really eternal, all just, all powerful, the way he is, if you sinned against him, it would you would deserve, it would yield an eternal consequence. If he gave you some temporal consequence, he wouldn't be an eternal God. He wouldn't be eternally just the way he claims to be. In fact, think about it this way. You have the choice between eternal torment and eternal life. If you choose eternal torment, how can you blame God for not giving you eternal life when you made that decision, when you chose to live that way? You chose to have your rewards in this life. And then when you die and your rewards are taken away, you have nothing left and you're burning, whose fault is it? Right, is it really God's fault? No, he gave you the option, gave you the knowledge, the work, your conscience, the word con in science means with knowledge, right? Your conscience means you have the knowledge. Sorry. Sorry no, no, go ahead, go ahead. But it, it happens like it is purely, you believe that it's purely believing in God that makes you saved, correct? Yeah, but belief is synonymous with obedience. Okay, belief I can is say, synonymous with obedience. Meaning but doing what he says. is also required. It has to be, of course. Absolutely. Of course. That's the foundation to be a so believer. You can't be a believer is, if you don't believe. Someone is also like obedient and kind. Like, yeah in like their personal lives without like, belief without belief yeah. that person is going to hell absolutely they don't have How belief do in god not believe that is an unjust well, fact i, I can How explain do you it not simply think that's unjust? it's simple listen you even people who don't believe but still are living what you called obedient have still sinned against god they've sinned against a god in some way in their life they've maybe they've told a lie maybe they've done something against god's what the law is but we've all done that you're right exactly we've all done and that's the beauty of the love of christ is that in Romans chapter five, verse six through eight, it says that in due time, while we were still without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us that in this sense, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died to save sinners and bring them into becoming a saint, living holy and righteous. So if you sinned against God, but then you decided to stop sinning somehow in your own power, and let's say hypothetically, even though it's not possible, you do overcome that sin on your own power, you're still not giving God his due diligence. Romans 1 says that. It says that God, it says that, well, they knew God, they did not worship God as he deserved to be worshiped. They, they had a form of godliness. Bro, you know you left your shoes in there, right? Did I? Yeah, you know you left your shoes in there. Both of you the are not ready. Yeah, so it says in Romans 1 that they, they, they knew God, but they did not honor God as he deserved to be honored. Let's say a prosecutor, like, actively... No, you're good. I'm, I'm coming down too. I like this. I'm just thinking. Uh, like, let's say a prosecutor, right? He prosecutes people based upon their actions their actions yes their actions with and intent he has to do that but with and intent he has to do that no but remember with intent right think about it this way if you have um somebody who gets in their car and they blast 90 down the highway to get to the hospital because their wife is pregnant right their intentions are to save their wife right because she could die in childbirth but if somebody gets in a car and just blasts 90 down the highway because they're angry and blasting music and they don't care that's negligent their intent shows that what they were doing was wrong nothing to do with belief and that's my issue no it does your belief is your intent right like if i do good just to do good i'm not giving god the glory i'm not giving him the honor that if he deserves do good just to do good that's fundamentally good if you're doing no nope, not without give belief god the glory exactly doesn't that make you fundamentally like uh, isn't that make you somewhat but god brings every thought every word every deed 
Th think, think about it this way, okay? Right? Like, if I give a homeless man money, right? And I do it on camera to be seen of other people, to make myself look good. Sure, I did a good action. Sure, it benefited that man. But why did I really do it? You, you did it. For my own gain. Your own gain. Exactly. But if you did it simply to do something good, that's still good. But why are you doing that good thing? Are you really doing it because it's good? Be, there doesn't always have to be a reason to be good. Well, think about it this way. You, there doesn't always have to be a reason to be good. Yes, and there you is. Know that. No, there is. There is a reason to be good. There's a reason to be good. And the reason to be good is because God has written it in your conscience. You know right from wrong. You don't need to believe in my God to know right from wrong. Even atheists know that raping women is wrong. Yes. They know that murdering babies is wrong. Okay? They know that doing these things, lying, doing all, they know that it's wrong because they're convicted, okay? Why are they convicted? Because the God that made them put it in their hearts, they know right from wrong. So there always is a reason to do good. The reason to do good is because you know to do good. The question is, why do you know to do good? Why? And if there was no reason to do good, if you're doing good, then there's really no benefit to it anyway. Right? Stand before your maker who will judge you by his perfect and holy I see your tattoo, man. It says sore losers forever. Do you no really want to be a loser forever? The judgment of God. No one. It says, doesn't matter too when my stepdad died. How many times I understand. Yeah, you know, losing family members is grieving. Matter. I've lost a couple You've myself. But you know, the Bible says that when we come to Christ and we truly Christ submit our lives to God, heart, death has lost its state. Right? Hades has lost its victory. We, we don't fear death anymore. As Christians, if, if hypothetically, if my brother over here preaching, if he died tomorrow, I, I would only cry because I would miss him. I wouldn't cry for him. I know where he's going. He's going to be with God. I would be rejoicing upon his death because he gets to go back to be with God. Right? That's amazing. But when we lose family members who, let's say maybe that, we love that family member dearly. But they were sinners. But they were sinners. They're going to hell. And we would cry over them because of the loss of their life. They have lost life. They're now in everlasting torment. That's terrifying. It's not monstrous if they made that choice. It's not monstrous because they made that choice. They made that choice. Yes. They were given freedom by God. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up. Let's say, hypothetically, that God decided upon creation to force all of us to do exactly what he wants us to do, right? Is that really love? Like, let's say hypothetically, you see a woman out here you like, right? I'm gonna use a really extreme example because if you can't step over a large rock, you're gonna trip over the small ones. Your example has to work on large rocks and small pebbles, right? If you see a woman out here you like and you put a gun to her head and you force her to have sex with you or be your girlfriend, whatever, just something wicked, right? Is that love on your part? Are you loving her? Okay, is it love on her part to do what you say? No, right? It's not love on either person's part. If God created you and forced you to obey him, it wouldn't be love. God loved you enough to create you and expect you to love him back. He gave you the option, right? You could choose to love him the way he loved you to make you and give you that freedom of choice, or you could choose to not love him and do the opposite of what he says. And without the ability to do the opposite of what he says, you don't have the ability to actually love him. Not even this last week, Long year I don't think you're getting it. If, if you don't have the choice to do wrong, then, then you don't have love. What has come out of your mouth? Oh, if you don't have the choice yeah, to well, do wrong. Well, the only way love can love. exist, the only way love can what exist is if you have the ability to not love. Right? Think about it. If God forced you to do what he said, you'd be a robot. You wouldn't have freedom of choice. You wouldn't have conscious awareness. None of your knowledge would matter. You'd be a robot stuck just doing whatever God says. Like, you'd be like, it, it'd be pointless. The reason why you have freedom of choice is because God loves you. God's not going to drag you kicking and screaming into heaven against your will, dude. He's going to give you the option, and when you choose to do right, He'll reward you. When you choose to do wrong, He'll He'll punish you. The Bible says in Revelation that as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. God chastises those that He loves. He puts them through a burning fire where they have to go through trials and tribulations so that God can break them down and mold them into the image He wants them to be in. We have freedom of choice and we have to submit our free will to God in order to be saved. That's just the way that the that creation is. You know? We have to choose willingly to submit ourselves to God, yes. That's how we know. Think about it this way, right? What more do we have to give this God who created the whole universe? What more do we have to give to him other than our obedience? If you choose to be a slave, aren't you still a slave? Of course, yeah. but being a slave isn't necessarily bad. What, are you talking about slavery 200 years ago with no, white men? I'm like just in general. Okay. Like Jesus Christ is Jewish. Well, you chose like personally yourself to be a slave. Yeah. Still a slave. I guess not. 
I guess I would say no, you're not, because you're choosing it, right? I mean, but it's different than what white men did to black people 200 years ago, or what the Aztecs did to the other tribes around them, or just, that type of slavery is not the slavery that God ever can condone. That's just, not, in fact, the first time slavery in the Bible was brought up, if you look at it in the Old Testament, it was the Hebrews, Israelites, being enslaved by the Egyptians and God setting them free from that slavery. So the first time we see slavery in the Bible, it's God abolishing it. And it's the same image all throughout, right? And so there's verses in scripture, like in Ephesians, where it says, slaves obey your masters. And people take that and they say, see, God can do slavery. No, it's saying, it's what it's teaching is that you're put in trials in life and you need to subject yourselves to the laws of the land to whatever you're being subjected to, you need to willingly submit yourself to it, to show the love that you have. We're not called to have a heart of rebellion, right? If someone does wrong to us, we turn the other cheek. Like if you, I know you wouldn't, but hypothetically you smacked me in the face right now, I would turn you the other cheek. If you stole my jacket, I would give you my shirt. If you asked me to walk one mile, I'd walk with you too, because that's the love of God in me. I love you enough to do that for you, to give you forgiveness. If you do wrong to me, I'm gonna forgive you. Not because I'm required to, but because I want to, because I care about your soul, because I wanna see you in God's kingdom. And what better way to overcome evil than with good? The Bible says, do not overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. Do good, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because the Bible says that if you do good to your enemy, it's like heaping hot coals of fire on their head. That's what it feels like to a, an evil person, a wicked person. I'm gonna give you an example. In 1980, roughly, I can't remember the year, the 80s, right? There was a man called the Green Bay River Killer. He raped and murdered 87 women. And they had a two, after his sentencing, they had a two week period of time in court every single day where the family members of the victims were allowed to come up and speak in, off the podium and, and give their words against this man and what he did. Almost all the people who stepped up there were rebuking him, cursing him out, telling him, I, I'm glad you're gonna burn in hell, all this stuff. But near the end of that two weeks, a man stepped up to the podium and he was an old old man with a beard and he was a, a Christian. And I think he was a Seventh-day Adventist. I disagree with the doctor, but whatever, doesn't matter. He was genuinely saved. And how do I know? Because of the way he responded, he said, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, Mr. So-and-so, right? There's many people who hate you here today. I'm not one of them. You've made it difficult for me to ex express my belief, but I forgive you, sir. This man raped and murdered his daughter, chopped her into pieces and disposed of her body. And he stood there in that courtroom in front of everyone and forgave him. That's the love of God. That if, if God held you to the standard that you would hold somebody in this life to, you'd be in hell right now. But God decided to give you something you don't deserve, an opportunity to be saved and set free from all the wrongdoing you've done in your life, and an opportunity to overcome all temptations and not do those things anymore. That's the love of God. Think about how amazing that love is to be called a child of God, to be given a new life, to have all your wrongdoings washed away and have the ability to overcome all wrongdoings in the future and not do them. That's the love that God bestows upon us, my friend. Think about that. Don't focus on people going to hell because they chose to go there and make God the bad guy because of it. Focus on the opportunity given to you and all those same people that they can be brought into newness of life and live forever and not be tormented, right? Instead of focusing on the negative as a pessimist, focus on the positive as an optimist and look at the good news. The good news, the gospel of Jesus is the good news of salvation. We're not out here condemning people to hell. We can't do that. We don't have the power. I don't have the power to send you to hell, okay? I don't have that. In fact, that's why we, none of us here believe in self-defense because let's say hypothetically, you're attacking me to kill me and I kill you in self-defense. You just went to hell. I'm, I'm in sin because I just sent you to hell. But if you kill me and I'm right with God, I'm going to be with God. So if I kill you, what I'm really doing is I'm, I'm, I'm hating your soul, which is against the, the law of Christianity, and I'm sending you to hell in order to avoid being with God. That's the most unchristian-like thing a person can do. I'm called to lay my life down for you. If you decide to kill me, I'm called to tell you, hey, I forgive you. You shoot me in the chest, I'm gonna look at you, I forgive you before I pass out and die. I'm gonna love you. Jesus did that on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He forgave his enemies while he died. Think about that. What was your name again? Caleb, that's right. I, I thought it was Caleb, but I didn't want to be wrong. God bless you, Caleb, man. I'm glad you came up and talked to me again today, man. It's really good to talk to you. Do you, do you want to maybe exchange phone numbers and text sometime? Keep keep in contact? You won't be able to for God. God will shut your mouth. Because this is like the, what, the second or third time I've run into you? Second. Second? That's right. Here, I'm going to let you type your number in here. You got Apple? Yeah. Nice. We'll have blue. We'll, blue, we'll have blue bubbles. <laughs> I don't like the green bubbles, man. Glory to God.
It's good talking to you, Caleb, man. I'm definitely going to be praying for you in the future, man, because I, I know these questions you have, man. They're they're good questions. They're, they're meaningful questions. You have a right to, to like, have a problem with people going to hell. Believe me, we don't enjoy people going to hell. We have a problem with people going to hell, too, and that's why we're out here, right? We don't want people to burn forever, right? That's terrifying. We don't want that. Yeah. Oh, you saved it in there? Nice, perfect. We're so I can send you a text message day. later. I want you to think on that and too. Though. If a slave it? like chooses to be a slave, yeah. still a slave. That was a profound question. Jesus Christ, so like, who died for you? If you're held completely, it's not to some game. Will, yeah. You're a slave. We're talking of about course. Your life. But if you're willingly choosing it, right? See, Jesus. You know what Jesus said about that? I can't remember the exact verse, but quote me on it. Go look it up. Jesus said, I no longer call you servant, but I call you friend. We're not going to be servants in the kingdom. We're going to be friends of God and children of God in the kingdom. In fact, the Bible says that the greatest among you will be the servant. Who's the greatest among us? Jesus. He's going to be the one serving us in the kingdom. He's our Shabbat, our rest, our, our uh, um, day of rest, right? He's the, when we go to be with him in his kingdom, he's not going to make us walk around giving him food. He's going to walk around giving us food. He's going to sit us at his table and feed us his food. That's the most beautiful part is that in this life, we're serving him. But in the next life, he serves us. Imagine sitting at the table of God and him feeding you. Think of how beautiful that is. Right? And that's why we're called to be servants in this life and give up all of our desires and not seek after the lusts of the flesh, the lusts of the eyes, and the pride of life. Right? The friendship with the world is enmity with God. We don't want to be an enemy of God. What is the pride of life? The pride of life. Okay. Well, I have to explain the other two first. So the lust of the flesh is you see it feels good to you, so you do it. The lust of the eyes is you see it, you want it, you go and get it. And the pride of life is look at me while I do it. Right? The pride of life is, look at me. I'm the one. I'm in charge. Like I, I do all this. Look how great I am. That's the pride of life. The Bible says that the pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. That God despises the proud. He hates, he hates a proud look. He hates it. Pride is disgusting, man. All sin actually stems from pride. Did you know that? The first, the first sin ever was Lucifer. He sinned. And what did he do? He said, I will exalt myself. I will be like God. He didn't say I'll be better than God. He knows that's not possible. He said, I'll be like the most high God. And he had pride and God cast him out because of it. And then he went and caused Eve to sin, beguiled her. And then she caused her husband to sin because he chose to do it knowing what he was doing. Now the whole world is cursed because of it. All because of pride. Pride is disgusting, man. We don't let, let it be far from us that we ever have a heart of pride, puffing ourselves up, making ourselves to be somebody, right? Like, what is that anyway? It's crazy. You know, Caleb, you see all these people nowadays doing shows and rapping and selling drugs and, you know, just doing all this stuff, celebrities trying to make themselves somebody. But really, what are we without God? Without the one who, who literally holds our life in his hands. He holds the whole world together. Every sun, no, every star out there, the moon, the sun, the earth, the air we breathe, all of it is held together by his mighty hands. And we want to try to make ourselves important in his eyes. God's not a respecter of persons, man. He's not going to let you in the kingdom because you were you knew 50 Cent and you rapped on stage with Eminem. He's not going to let you in the kingdom because you, you made a bunch of sales and gave people cars and helped their family. You don't earn your way to heaven. You're going. The only reason I'm going to go to heaven is because of what God has done for me. Not because of what I do. You know, that's ridiculous. And there's religions out there that teach that it's about what, like, you earn your way there, you know? So. Morning. Morning, how you doing? Good, my name is Anthony Davis. I'm an associate VP and dean of students here. Okay. At the university. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Paul. Paul. Um, you are, um, are you a student, staff, no, or sir. faculty? No, sir. I'm just, a, I'm just an American citizen, and my taxpayer money go, goes to this campus, so I come here to talk to people. Absolutely. So you just need to go to one of our designated public forums, and the designated public forums are the grassy area or the area between um, Urban Life Plaza. So my question to you is why you're not telling him that. Is it because he's a student? Yes. Okay, so what if... Students have... Now, if, if he invites you as a guest and he acknowledges you as an invited guest and stays here with you, you have the same, you can you can stay right here. I, I gotta go. Huh. I'm not asking you to do that, you're good. I don't actually need you to do that by law. I have the right to be here, so, so don't work. Yeah, so, so, so basically you, 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 you are, you have the, um, you can go to one of our designated public forums. Students, any outdoor spaces. You, you do understand I'm not forum. soliciting though, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm simply exercising my, my amendment rights. That's absolutely. all I'm doing. 
Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this: What will happen if I don't move? Well, then I will. It become, it become a police issue. Then. Yeah. It well, become a what? A police issue. A police issue? Yes, sir. Are you saying it would become a civil violation? All I'm saying, sir, it would become a police issue. Yeah. So we're asking you: This is our policy. This is yeah. Georgia State. Policy. Okay. Under the threat of duress, I will move back over there to the grass. Under the threat of duress, because y'all are being unlawful right now. Can I get your name and badge number, sir? Yeah. Fleming 312. Flemmy 312? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and well, your name was? I'm Anthony Davis. I'm Anthony Davis. I'm a VP and I'm dean of students here. Okay. Yeah, so we can do time, yeah, time area, manner restrictions are, le are, are lawful. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. God bless. Hey, Caleb. It was good talking to me. Here, I'll help you up, man. Come on. Yeah. God bless you, man. It was good talking to you today, all right? It's unlawful, sir. I don't need a copy of your unlawful documents. I mean, time, place, and manners can sort of laugh, laugh and tell me you can't stand out there or walk around the campus. We're not in front of a student uh, building where they're having classes, preaching loudly, and disturbing classes. No, not it's at all. Public forum area, just like this is public forum area. Yeah. We can stand out there as long as we're not blocking traffic, which we haven't done. We've yep. never done that. Yeah. Never. We have designated public forums for unaffiliated members of the community. For That's affiliated members of the community, every every outdoor space is a private is a campus policy. Yes, sir, you don't understand. Our money, our taxpayer money, affiliates us with this place. You don't understand that, do you? Not so, for so our to policy. Give, to, give, to give students authorization to be here but not us is a private campus policy. Yep. Yes, sir. I've been doing this for over 20 years. 135 campuses. You're wrong. That's it. Okay. And our, our, our willing to work with you and be over here is, is by our own free will, because we have your obligation. Yep. Well, I appreciate you working with us. And to clarify, the only reason I moved back here is because that officer threatened me with arrest. That's the only reason I moved over here. Which is illegal, yes. It's open to a lawsuit. Absolutely. Open to a lawsuit. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and, you know, you guys have your beliefs and, and what you beliefs. have what I know. Constitution, and sir. We, we, don't, we don't necessarily have to agree. <sighs> but we don't, but you are wrong. Well, thank you for your cool words. Yeah, we appreciate you. Well, thank you. Take care. I wonder what will happen when someone takes away your rights, sir, because you didn't stand up for somebody else's. Agree with yourself. Test. Test. No? Test. There it is. Test. Test. Lord Jesus Christ commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness the lord jesus christ he died for you he suffered for you he was crucified for you and for your sins and he's calling you today right now to repentance to forsake your sins to give your life to him to surrender all to jesus christ your whole life your future your past your present have you asked the lord jesus christ who is your creator have you asked him what he wants to do with your life or have you taken your life into your own control and decide for yourself with your own finite intellect what you should do with your life. He is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords. Yes. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the Almighty. He's going to judge the living and the dead. He says, Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his works. The Father has given him the name of every name. In the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. If any of you here within the sound of my voice, you have the opportunity to meet with and talk with the person who you exalt above everyone or anyone else, any celebrity, anyone who knows anything about finances or government, any political official, if you are given a whole day to spend with them, you do whatever you could to do that whatever you could and the Lord Jesus Christ you have the opportunity starting today to be right with God to have a relationship with him I 
I speak with the Lord Jesus Christ every single day. Amen. He gives me wisdom. He gives me guidance. He gives me direction. He gives me rebuke, encouragement, exhortation. He is my counselor. And he is God in flesh. He sits at the right hand of the Father now, but someday he will return to judge the living and the dead. He will judge this world in righteousness. He is my primary and supreme counselor for my life. And I have his word, the Bible, the holy scriptures, which are a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, which has found treasure untold. Treasure untold in the word of God. I've been reading the word of God for 26, almost 27 years now, and I'm still mining the treasures of God's word. Amen. What do you trust in? Woo. Some book you paid $100 for beginning this semester? God is good. That's what you're trusting in? And you're going to sell it back into the semester for $10? And you probably didn't even read it very much? Where do you get your wisdom from? Where do you get guidance for life from? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's God breathed. Yes. It is profitable for doctrine, for correction, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's the word of God. More precious than silver, more costly than gold. The Word of God is available to you for free. I know for a fact all of you here have personal computers inside your pocket or in your hand that you carry around like a baby does a pacifier. Yeah. Acting like you can't live without it. And you can access the Word of God, the words of life, on that personal computer anytime you want. You can do that. You simply need to humble yourself. Open up BibleGateway.com, turn to the New King James or King James Version of the Bible, and read what it says. God wants to speak to you. I've heard so many people, my last 26, almost 27 years now of being a Christian, who say, I've prayed so many times and God doesn't speak to me. Do I have to say about that? Open the Bible. That's God's Word. Amen. He wants to speak to you today. He wants to tell you what he is like. He wants to tell you what he's going to do in the future, what he's done in the past, how he's going to judge the world, what he thinks of you, what he expects of you. The word of God is true. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will never pass away. Never. You cannot disconnect the word of God from God himself. For he is not a man that he should lie. His words are true. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will never pass away. Amen. The scripture says that the word of God is precious. Is it precious to you? I'm not talking about just any so-called holy book. I'm talking about the Bible, the scriptures. God wants you to know the scriptures from your youth, starting right now. That you may not be deceived into false doctrine and false religion. That you might not end up in hell for your sin. It's so funny, isn't it, Mocker? You won't be funny on judgment, that sinner. When you stand before God, you mock God now. You won't mock him then, wicked devil. You won't mock him then. Yeah, okay. You will mock him then. It's amazing how you walk away with your hand like that. I won't stand up for what you believe in right here in front of me. You coward. You're a coward. That's what you are. You're a coward. You won't stand up for what you believe in and you keep on walking, man. It's like a drive-by. If you really believe what you believe, stand up for it. Don't be a coward. I'm here taking my time out of my day proclaiming the truth of God's word to all who can hear. Amen. Because it is God's word. Hallelujah. It is true. There's nothing that can change that. Even if I were to become a wicked devil and a hypocrite myself and depart from the faith, nothing would change the fact of God's word. Which will judge you. You're going to be judged. 
you know. Love God, yeah, perfect. If you love God, you'd obey God. If you'd love God, you'd, you'd rejoice at the preaching of his word. No one's tripping here. I'm standing on my two feet. <laughs> why, why, he say, why, why, you, why he say he's tripping? Ain't no one tripping here, man. You, got God. you he tripping, tripping, you're stumbling, you're falling in sin. That's your own choice. God. That's your own fault. Tripping. You need some construction That's on your, your heart, fault. man. That's what you need. The scripture says this is the love of God. First John 5, that 3. we keep his commandments. Amen. And his commandments are not burdensome. If you have anyone who claims to be a follower of Jesus Christ, anyone who claims to be a Christian but they're living in sin, they are lying to you. You can't follow Jesus Christ and be a sinner. Nope. Jesus Christ will not lead you to be a sinner. If you're following Jesus Christ, you're living a holy life. Amen. Because that's how he lived. He never even lied. He never lusted. He definitely never got drunk. He never engaged in sexual immorality. He wasn't trying to change his gender. Jesus Christ was holy. Yep. And the Bible says, as obedient children, not conforming yourself to your former lust, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, so you also be holy. Amen. In all your conduct. In all of it. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. You see, God the Father has some expectations for his creation. We are all his offspring, according to Acts 17. But you become a child of God through becoming born again. For the Father begets you, that you become his child, and he becomes your father. You become born again by surrendering your whole life to him. And he makes you new. He changes you. For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation. Not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. Amen. For observe this very thing, talking about Christians, how you sorrowed in a godly manner. What diligence it produced in you. What clearing of yourself. What indignation, what fear, what vehement desire, what zeal, what vindication. And all things you proved yourself to be clear in this matter. The someone who becomes a Christian does whatever it takes. Yep. Gives up whatever needs to be given up. All of it. Clings on to whatever needs to be clinged on to. For dear life. And not just your life, dear eternal life. And so God wants you to give your life to him. He's trustworthy. He's worthy of your life. He can be trusted. Hey, get the other side. Hey, hey, get the other side, man. Here. He's worthy of yeah. your trust. The good and the bad news, worthy man. Of your hope. With your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. He deserves your all. And he demands your all. He commands all men everywhere to repent. Depart from your sin. What's your sin cost you so far in your life? What consequences have you had to endure? Temporal, earthly consequences you had to endure for your sin. Let that be a picture to you, a warning to you, an exhortation to you to give up your sin. Amen. It's going to cost you everything in the end. Hallelujah. It's cost you very little, give comparatively speaking, so far. But I know it's cost you something. I've been there. I've done that. My sin and when I was a sinner cost me problems with the law. It cost me a clean record. It cost me friendships, relationships. It cost me money. It cost me time I could not get back. Sin cost you something. But the most precious thing that your sin will cost you is your soul. Yep. The most important thing your sin will cost you is a relationship with Jesus Christ and with his Father and eternal life. Is it really worth that? Absolutely. I know you get pleasure from your sin. I've been there. I've done it. I know the pleasure of sexual sin. I know the pleasure of that buzz, that high you get from getting drunk. I know it. But it's not worth it. It's not worth going to hell over. It's not worth rejecting the God of the universe and a relationship with him. Oh, the joy, the peace, the comfort, the love there is in knowing 
God Almighty. Amen. And you have no idea what you're missing out on if you're a sinner. You'll never know. And I see until you give him your life. You don't have to. You'll never know until you surrender all to him. But I'm here to tell you, I'm here to testify to you as a man who's been following Jesus Christ for almost 27 years now, over Amen. half my life. Amen. And there's nothing worth that relationship with God. Yes. Nothing worth rejecting his son Jesus who died for you. None of it. Nothing. Nothing worth going to hell over. The scripture says, for when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God we're at Georgia demonstrated, State University. put on display his own love toward us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, amen. See, what Jesus Christ did Thank in the you, cross Lord. Thank you, Lord. is not worthy of some kind of Easter bunny, Easter egg basket, Easter egg hunt nonsense. What it's worthy of is your life. Yes. Jesus Christ dying on the cross for you was God's love put on display towards you in your sin as an enemy of God through your sexual depravity, through your drug using for the alcohol or some other drug, through your profanity, your profane mouth Amen, and sister. your wicked heart. That was God's love put on display for you that you do not deserve, that none of us deserve. But yeah, he put it on display for you. He manifested it for you. The love of God on the yes. cross of Jesus. Amen. Manifested towards you. Put on display for all to see. For all to know. Yes, you're my enemy in your sin. But here I am. With open arms saying, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Then he died for you that you might receive eternal life, that you might get what you don't deserve, the easy. mercy of God. His burden is light. That's what he offers you. Not just all of you corporately, but every single one of you individually, yes. God offers you eternal life as a free gift. Could you just walk on by and ignore it? Can you just go about your life with your ears plugged, not listening to the horns of light? Not listening to what God offers you. Shame on you if you can. It's a shame unto you as you coast on to hell in your sin. And you ignore the out. You ignore the way of escape. Don't the ignore exit it. Don't ignore your it. trip to hell is only found in Jesus Christ. And only the name of Jesus Christ. The only name under heaven, given among men, by which we must be saved, is Jesus Christ. You hear that? Jesus! The name of every name. It's not a name for you to cuss for to express the disgust of your heart. The name of every name. Jesus Christ. The name by which you can be saved and set free from sin. Jesus Christ. That even your days, your zombie-like day as you walk in your life, going about like it doesn't matter. And the only thing that matters is the next pleasure you get, the next high you get. No, it's not what matters. Stop walking around like zombies, dazed and confused. Going about your life as if only the next minute matters. We're talking about eternity now. And where you're going to spend it. God is reaching out to you through us. We're ministers of reconciliation, ambassadors of Christ, calling out to you as if Christ were pleading through us. Be reconciled to God. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Stop playing game with your soul. I should be arrested for preaching the word of God. Is that what you said? Shame on you. You're wicked. Does someone be arrested for trying to save you from hell? Trying to save you from your sins? Twisted! 
So backwards. Go to those who call evil good and good evil. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Most of you are backwards. You think what I'm doing is wicked. The most good and godly thing someone could do is to share the words of eternal life with those who are perishing in their sins and on their way to hell. That's most of you. Most of you couldn't care less about Jesus Christ or you have a different Jesus, a different Christ. And Jesus Christ himself talks about the false Christ that will come in the last days. The false Christ of Islam who say he's just a prophet. Lord, the Son of God, God in flesh. That's Jesus Christ. He said before Abraham was, I am. And they said, you're barely 30 years old. And you lived before Abraham? They knew, they understood that Christ had a source which is prior to his coming in the flesh to the Virgin Mary. He had a glory with the Father. In fact, John 1 was, in the beginning was the Word, that's Jesus. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Jesus. Without Him, nothing was made that was made. For so many years, so deceived, there's so many deceptions the devil gives in this world. So many distractions the devil gives in this world in our day and age. And you're all falling for it. You're all falling for it. Get the other side. Hold on. You don't get it. Your sin will cost you everything. You think your sin is no big deal. It's a big deal to God. We know it's a big deal to God because God made a place called hell for sinners. That's how big sin is to God. And really, what you think about sin, if it doesn't agree with God, matters not. It matters not. If your idea about sin and how much it matters differs from what God said about it, you're deceived. You're deceived. Sin matters. God says, thou shalt not. And you say, thou shalt. And God says, judgment. To hell you will go. But God says about that. You say, oh, there's a little white lie, a little half truth, a little fib, there's a little bit of lust, nobody knows about it. Just common as this. Nobody will know. Oh, I just gossip about that person or one other person. No one will know. Oh, my daughter's on the internet. Nobody will know. God knows. God knows. Gibson makes it clear. His eyes are on the ways of men, and he sees all their steps. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. Even if you hide your sin behind some religious veneer, some outward piety, some formality of religion, God sees through it. People may be deceived. May deceive everybody around you and how holy, how pious you are, supposedly. But it doesn't fool God. When you stand before God to be judged, you'll not be judged by the people who saw you and didn't see you in truth. You'll be judged by God himself, who knows all. His eyes are on the ways of men, and he sees all their steps. There is no darkness. There is no shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. Don't deceive yourself. Amen. Give up your sin. Get right with God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness. That so your sin is filthy to God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. But be doers of the word and not hearers only. What do you mean yourself. by that? It's do I have a job? It's is that what you said? No, no, no. Is this no, y'all's no. job? Huh? Is this y'all's job? Y'all get paid to do this? No, no. we pay to do this. 26 on a Monday and you're paying to do this? No, yeah, we so pay to do this. So you're asking the question, do I have a job? 
Well, I'm not asking the question you have a job. I'm asking why are you at 126 on a Monday? Are you retired? No. Are you retired? Why does that matter? Well, because you guys are paying. What do you do think this. is more important, man? Working a job or preaching the gospel? What's wrong with you, man? You got problems, man. We're you pleading with you to get right with God. You should make this your job. Do I have a job? <laughs> That's your question. Do I have a job? Are you concerned about my financial situation, young man? Is that what it is? Didn't think so. I'm concerned with your soul. Yep. You need to quit your sin job. The wages Amen. of sin is death. Amen. Your sin job will cost you everything in the end. I follow the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm about my father's business. Amen. Yes, I have a job. Yes. Yes, I have a large family to provide for. Yes, I sacrifice my time where I could be making money, which will perish. And I come here for your soul. Yep. For the sake of your soul. Because I care for you and love you with the love of Christ. That's it. It's not hard to understand. It's hard for someone to understand. If their primary focus in life, I gotta make the almighty dollar. I gotta make the buck. I gotta get a million. You're gonna die. And then whose money will your money be? If it says riches do not profit in their wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. You don't need righteousness. Your money will perish with you. You can't buy your way into heaven. Jesus Christ said, do not live for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal, but live for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal, but where your treasure is, there your, your heart, heart will, will be, be also. also. Amen. See, when someone says to me, well, I'm trying to tell them about it, the words are coming to life. You got a job? You know the heart is? You know the treasure is on earth? See, my focus is eternity. Yes. My eyes are on eternity. Now my whole life we focus upon how does it impact my eternity and your eternity. It's ultimately what matters. Your life compared to eternity the speck of a grain of sand on the face of the Sahara Desert. Your life is nothing compared to it forever. Your life compared to forever is a drop of water in the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, you live for the now. You live for today. No. Live in light of eternity. Yes. Your perspective will change. Amen. How you live your life will change. If you see the truth of the matter, then what is your life? But a vapor. What is it? It's a vapor Here. that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. It just goes away. Many of you people like to vape. You blow it in, you blow it out, it disappears. Where'd it go? Try to collect it again. <laughs> See if you can get a vapor back. Where'd it go? I get a vapor back. Nothing you like? That's your life? Did it disappear and you can't get it back? And the Bible says that you have this little space of time that you call life as a vapor. You Please don't touch me, man. To get right I said, God. don't touch me again. You have that time to get right with God, this life you have. And that's precisely why the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. You don't know if you have tomorrow. Then what will you do? You're making plans for what you do this next weekend. You're making plans for the semester. You're making plans for what kind of job you'll get when you get to college what your life's going to be like, you're making those plans, you may not have it. You may not have it. You make all these plans. What have you step out here right now in a car? Run you over. What will happen then? With these guys, that might happen too. Then what will you do? What will become of all your fleshly, worldly efforts then? All your pursuits. A wicked thing. What will happen then? What will it matter then? 
It won't matter. Those things don't matter, attorney. Don't let matters, attorney. It's what you there it do is again. with Jesus Christ. There it is again. What you do in attorney is what will matter. Get the other side. And what you do Here. for the Lord side. Jesus Christ. The good news. Uh, it's what only, only what matters in this life, whether you're following him or not. Amazing that these, that the sinners who walk by who hate the gospel, you don't have to say it so loud, you have a mic. And they blast music in their ears day in and day out. And they care a little bit. That's wicked. They love their wickedness and they're saying, I don't want to hear what you have to say. Oh, it's man, it's sad. It's a bomb to my ears, they say. I hope they repent. Because you love your sin. But I love you enough to yell it in your ear. Yep. I hope it yells throughout all your day. It plays in your mind until you finally repent. Yep. This mess, let it replay in your heart. That's my prayer. Oh, God, let it replay in their hearts and in their minds. They let that sea sink into their heart and repent. Yes. That's what really matters now. What really matters. All the other things, these facade of things, matters not on Judgment Day. I wonder how much, how much of activity, how much of your time is spent that you'll regret it on Judgment Day. Wish I had not spent a second on this and that and this and that because it's worthless to me now. Don't live a life of regret. You live your life in light of eternity. Get right with God. Amen. Surrender all to Him. Yes. And He will make of your life what He desires to make of it, which the best your life could be. Yep. That truly is your best life now. Yep. A life completely surrendered to Jesus Christ is your best life now my life of fame and fortune and popularity and notoriety a possession a life of surrender to jesus christ the king of kings the lord of lords he's calling out to you today come to me he's calling out to you today repent or perish He's calling out to you today, give your life to Jesus. He cries out through his suffering, through his bruises, through his scourging, through his mocking and scoffings of him, through the crown thorns put upon his head. Hey and being nailed to the cross, he cries out to so you. Can come you, can go, you can go talk to him. So you're she's like, no, you're not going to do that. He, right. he, you want him to move, you go talk to him. Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay, I was trying to be nice about I understand. I, uh, simple. you asking about Jesus him, you can go talk to him. Follow repentance. Follow Jesus. God bless, sir. God bless. I, like I said, man. We a lot studied you, man. That's all right. It's been hard for you. I mean, it wasn't hard for you to do it. You, you. I don't know why you have to come to me about him. It was just a respect thing, man. I, I'm not trying to be mean to you. you out of respect. I, I don't so, think that's so the, the case, sir. Up there to him I don't, I don't think preaching. that's the case, sir. I mean, either way, he'd be interrupted, right? right okay. God bless you, sir. I have nothing against you. All right.
Yes. Testing. Testing. Test. Test. Yes. God commands all men and women everywhere to repent of all sin. There is coming a day in which you're going to stand before a righteous God and you're going to have to give an account for every single, single thing you've ever said, had, or done. And just as this campus is under construction right now, you need to put your life under the construction of God. You see, there's a lot of people out here today who think that they're right with God. They think that, that they're doing something good with their lives, but they're living in con constant, perpetual sin. And they're being led in the wrong direction. And the only way to know that you're being led in the right direction is by following the one who is the way. You see, Jesus said, enter in at the narrow gate, for broad is the path that leads to destruction. And many are them that be on it. Narrow is the way, difficult is the path that leads to life. And very few are them that find it. Are you on the broad path that leads to destruction today? Or are you on the narrow path, the difficult way that leads to life? There's a lot of people who think they're right with God, but they're not. And this is why we come out here today to tell you the truth. We endure the cold. We endure the, the, the mockery. We endure the scoffing and the laughing and people who mock us because we love you, because we care about you, because God does not delight in the death of the wicked. He delights when you repent of your sin. The Bible says all of heaven rejoices over one sinner who repents. All of heaven will rejoice if you just give up yourself. Surrender what you have in this life and give it to Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you will know a tree by its fruit. For a good tree will not produce bad fruit, nor will a bad tree produce good fruit. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart will bring forth good things. But an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart will bring forth evil things. You hypocrites! How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I tell you, every idle word that a man utters in this life, he will give an account for in the day of judgment. For by your words, you are justified, and by your words, you are condemned. Are your words justifying you here today? Or are your words condemning you? Do you have evil, wicked, vile things coming out of your Yay! mouth? Satan, pe Satan likes pedophiles. Do you like pedophiles? You. Yeah, you're lying. You're a capper. You're capping. See, Satan peddles for rape and murder and pedophilia and, and evil wickedness. But you say, hail Satan. But if you saw someone do that, you would rebuke them. If you saw someone murder somebody, you would rebuke them. If you saw somebody steal from someone, you would rebuke them, especially if it was you. So you don't really hail Satan. You're just trying to mock the word of God. And you know, the Bible says that God is not mocked. Do not deceive yourselves, my friends. You think, you think that you're mocking God, but all you're really doing is su successfully storing up wrath for yourself on the day of judgment. Now back to my question, do you, are you having evil, vile wickedness coming out of your heart today? Are you mocking the word? Are you mocking the preaching of the gospel out here today? Because if you are, what you're really doing is showing the state of your heart. My friends, the Bible says that God can replace your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. He can give you a new body, a new heart, a new mind. The Word of God can be rejuvenating to you. The Bible says that you can have times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. But if you continue in your sin, it will cost you everything. It will literally cost you everything. You think that the delayment of your judgment means the, the lack of it altogether. But that's not true. That could not be farther from the truth. Just because you have not been held accountable yet does not mean that you will not be held accountable one day. My friends, we care about you. We love your souls. And just as these construction workers are leading you through traffic, we're leading you through sin. We want to tell you the way out of sin the way to avoid the, the vehicles of sin that will run you over. We want to show you the way to walk through and not be harmed. Bible says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
We are my staff. God is the way and to be able to overcome all temptations. And my friends, don't be deceived. All sin starts with a temptation. Every single sin. It starts with a thought in your mind. The enemy whispering to you. And you get, you get beguiled into thinking, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that orgasm feels good. Yeah, that getting drunk feels good. Yeah, that smoking weed feels good. Getting high feels really good. But it's not going to feel good in hell. It's not going to feel good when you're burning, weeping, wailing, and gnashing your teeth for all of eternity. Thinking about the fact that you had a chance, but you blew it. There was a man who was sent to hell, and he cried out for his brothers to be saved. He said, don't let my brothers come to this place. But he was told it's to, they, they have the way. They, they have salvation offered to them. Let them obey it. He said, no, they'll believe someone if they come back from the dead. And here we are, 2,000, 24 years later, somebody came back from the dead, and they still don't believe. People still do not believe the gospel because they love themselves, because they love their sin. That middle finger is going to fall off on Judgment Day, sir. You need to repent, sinner. You're not going to be that bold on Judgment Day when you stand before a righteous God. And this God takes everything you've done and lays it out before all to see. When you have to give an account and answer for every single thing done in the flesh. Don't you know that God is the most meticulous record keeper that there has ever been? You think that your professors are good at keeping track of your grades? They're nothing in comparison to God who's going to have the ultimate grade. And he's not going to grade you on a curve. He's not going to grade you based on other people's actions. He's going to grade you based on your actions. He's going to judge you and condemn you if you do not repent. But my friends, there is hope for you. The blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse you, can wash you clean of all sin. But you have to humble yourselves. That gift is not offered to you so that you can, you can just keep on sinning and sin, repent, repeat, sin, repent, repeat. Jesus Christ gave you the way to not repeat. Jesus said to repent, not to repeat. The word repent means metanoia. It means the changing of your mind. It means that you change your mind from being a sinner into being an obedient saint. See, Paul didn't write to the dead people on a necklace. He didn't write to the dead people that people pray to. He wrote to the saints in Corinth, the saints in Colossae, the saints in Philippa. He wrote to the saints, not the dead people. You can be a saint today, my friends. You don't need the Catholic Church or some ordained pastor to mark you as a saint after you die and they look at what you did. No, you can be a saint right here, right now. If you'll humble yourselves, repent. James 4.4 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Don't you know that being a friend of this world makes you an enemy of God? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. You need to cleanse yourself before the sight of God right now, today, while there's time. Your heart is still beating. It's beating this thing called blood which carries life through your body. And this blood is holding this precious thing called oxygen. And it's pumping through your body, going to all your muscles and all your blood vessels, going to your brain, giving you life. But one day, your heart will beat its last beat. One day, your lungs will inhale for the last time, and you will draw your last breath, and you will die, and you will have to stand before a righteous God. And don't you know that this God is not all-inclusive? He doesn't say love is love. He doesn't say be proud, be proud, be prideful in yourself. He doesn't say that at all. He's not all inclusive and accepting. God is judgmental. God is the ultimate judge. He's gonna hold you accountable to what you do. God despises sin. If God was okay with sin, Adam and Eve would still be in the garden today, and so would all of us. If God was okay with sin, Sodom and Gomorrah never would have been destroyed with brimstone from heaven. God rained it down on them because of their sexual immorality. If God was okay with sin, Jesus never would have came and died on the cross in order to give you a way out of sin and to cleanse you of all sin. But because he came and did that, it shows you the cost, the cost of your sin, my friends. It's going to cost you everything, your eternity, your life. Islam is false. 
Muhammad died. Buddha died. Charles Darwin died. They all died, but Jesus rose from the dead. Why would you want to follow somebody if you want to have life? Why would you follow someone who died? It makes no sense. You want to follow somebody who's alive. And Jesus died and rose from the dead. He came back from the dead. Nobody else did that. Nobody. Don't you know that, my friends? Nobody. 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 And you can laugh and scoff and mock all you want. Can, can I take a selfie with you? Go for it, sir. You can scoff, mock, and laugh all you want, but all you're doing, all you're doing, all you're doing is storing up wrath for yourself. You're not mocking God. You're mocking yourself. Don't you know that God is going to take all things that offend and bind it hand and foot and cast it into the everlasting lake of fire? Don't you know that? Don't you know that God has prepared vessels for wrath? That he's going to put you in a body that's going to be able to uh, uh, burn forever? It's not going to cease to exist. It's not going to stop. And if you follow any, anybody besides Jesus, if you're following the, the pedophile false prophet Muhammad, if you're following the dead man Buddha, Sadota Garma, who didn't know what he was talking about, if you follow these people, you'll go to the same place they're in right now. It's called hell. Hell is awaiting you for your sin. There's hell to pay for your sins, my friends. But we're out here today to tell you a way out of that. The way out is Jesus. He said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus said that. The only salvation, the only hope, the only thing that you have in this life is Jesus Christ. And anything, anything at all that you have besides Jesus is worthless. It's meaningless. It's not serving you. It's going to cost you in the day of judgment. My friends, please repent of your sins today. Turn to Jesus Christ while there's still time. There's still an opportunity of salvation offered to you. But this world, this world wants to teach you about a fake love, a fake gospel, a fake way, fake love that says, oh, accept everyone just the way they are. A fake love that's leading LGBTQIA plus uh, affiliated people to hell every day because they have a false love. They don't know love. The love of God is this, 1 John 5, verse 3. It says, this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not burdensome. You see, loving God and God loving you is having a relationship of faithfulness. If you have a significant other and they're not faithful to you, then, then how do you know they really love you? They don't. You know by their actions, you know by their deeds that they do not love you. The Bible calls us to be obedient to God. And what else do we have to give to a holy, righteous God except our uttermost obedience? God doesn't even hear the prayers of sinners. If you're out here today and you're walking in sin, God does not hear your prayers. God will only hear the prayers of a broken and contrived heart. Someone who is humble. That's who God is coming for. God came for those who would humble themselves. Humble themselves in the sight of God. He's not looking for people who are proud, who stand up for their own self, who are only in, in it to win it. The only way that you're going to have salvation is by losing, losing your sin, being a loser for Christ. That's right. We are brainwashed out here. We're brainwashed in the word of God instead of brain dirty in the sins of the world. We're fully 100% sold out for Jesus Christ. And we tell you today, friends, we care about you. We want you to be saved. We don't want you to go to hell. If we wanted you to go to hell, we would pack our stuff up and leave. Matter of fact, we never would have came out here if we wanted you to go to hell. We don't want you to go to hell. We want you to go to heaven, to have a way out, to go to the kingdom of God. Jesus is coming back to reward every man according to his works. Your works. That's what's going to happen. You're going to be held accountable for everything that you do. You're going to be held accountable for everything that you do. Every single thought, word, and deed is going to be brought forth to the light. None of the deeds that you do in this life are going to be... Bro, can you move over? None of the deeds that you do in this life are going to be hidden. All things are going to be brought forth. All things are going to be brought out into the open. God is going to judge everything that you do. Yeah, praise God. Thank you. He's going to hold you accountable for, to everything that you do. Don't you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Don't you want to have a relationship with the one who loved you first? Jesus Christ loved you at the cross. Nobody else loved you enough to give their life for you. Everyone out here today, 
None of you have died. You haven't died. Jesus died. He loved you enough to give his life for you. Nobody else out here would give their life for you. They, they might give their life to, to save the ones that they love. But would they give their life for those that they... Sorry. Give their life for those that they don't know? The Bible says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in this sense. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for you while you were in your sin. So that you could be saved from it. Brought out of it. Brought out of iniquity. And brought forth into the light. Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. By this we know that we know Jesus. If we keep his commandments. He who says, I know Jesus, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Don't you know that, my friends? That if you continue living in willful sin against God, you do not know who Jesus Christ is. You don't know him. You don't know his love. You don't know his powerful, uh, life-giving blood. You haven't met him. You, you don't know what he does for people. You just, have a, uh, you just honor him with your lips, but your heart is far from him. Don't you know, my friends, that God is seeking after a relationship with you to bring you into the light because he loves you? 1 John chapter 1, starting at verse 5 says, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. All sin. Don't you know this, my friends? It continues to say in chapter 3, And ye know that Jesus was manifest to take away our sin, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abides in him sins not. And whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as Jesus is righteous. He that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might... Was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Whosoever does not do righteousness is not of God, neither he that loves not his brother. You see, we're out here today loving you as our, as our brother or sister, in the way that we would love a brother or sister, by telling you the truth. That doesn't mean that you're children of God. If you're in sin, you're not God's children. The only way to be a child of God is to submit, submit yourself to Jesus Christ to become born again of the Spirit. Whereas your first birth, you were born into the world physically, in the world, and now you're here. But to be born of the Spirit, to have a spiritual birth, to be changed from the inside out, to have all of the things that you've done in this world washed away, and to live from this moment forward in the Lord Jesus Christ, to put Him on, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ like a parachute. Don't you know, my friends? God loves you enough to die for you. Do you love God enough to die for him? Would you be willing to give your life for Jesus Christ today? If it really came down to it, would you give up your life for Jesus Christ? Because if you're not willing to die for Jesus, you're not worthy to be his disciple. You're not worthy to be one in the kingdom. God is going to judge you for all that you do in this world. Everything. You think that you're not being seen by anybody when you close your door at night in your dormitory or your home or your apartment and you go click, click, click on the internet on those websites. Or when you go with your significant other you're not married to and you fornicate with them. When you think, you think that you're, you're okay. You think that you got away with it. But you didn't. You did not get away with it. God saw it. God wrote it down. There's a record of it. And he's going to open that record up one day. He's going to hold you accountable. You have something to say, sir? Or are you just going to walk away like a coward? Come back and argue your point. Only cowards do drive-bys and run away. Come back and speak your mind. Show me the reasoning behind your illogical worldview. Oh, wait, you can't because there is none. There's no reason to live in sin. There's no reason to go against God. God is commanding you to repent today, my friends. Don't you know that? God loves you. He cares about you. 
He wants you to be born again and saved. He doesn't want you to have filthy, vile wickedness coming out of your heart. He doesn't want you to be uh, damned by your actions. He wants you to be justified by being obedient to him. The love of God is to keep his commandments, to, to be obedient to him. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, let us come to a conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's own. You're a pervert, sir. You need to repent. God is calling all of you today, my friends. He wants you to be saved. He knows, you, he knows how many hairs are on your head. You need to repent, woman. You need to be quiet and learn in silence. That's what you need to do. You need to go and read the word of God. You, you, many of you will say that, you, that you've never heard God's voice before. You, you know God's not real because he never spoke to me. I tried. Open your Bible. Open your Bible and read it. That's God directly speaking to you. Don't you know that? And they said Jesus was in a cult. They said all of his disciples were in a cult. But he still died to save those people. So I reject your false assumption about us, your false accusation. We love everyone out here. We care about your soul. We don't want you to die and go to hell. We don't want you to be sent into the everlasting pit of fire, torment. You know what the real cult is? The real cult is sin. Sin is the biggest cult that there ever was. Sin is a cult that brings all people into its grasp. People who sin, they're in a cult. Because they're, they're, the cult leader is Satan. Sin, that's the cult leader. The Bible says, Know ye not that to whom you subject yourselves servants to obey, that that is your master whom you obey, whether it be sin leading unto death or obedience leading unto righteousness. Why don't you join Jesus Christ and become part of his kingdom and be saved today, my friends? God is calling you to repent of your sins and become born again. He does not want you to go to hell. But if you stay doing things your way, you're going to end up in hell. Seriously. You think it's a game. You think it's a joke. You laugh. You laugh. You mock the gospel. Don't you know that when, when you mock the gospel of Jesus, all you're doing is fulfilling prophecy? Thank you for confirming my Bible. By mocking my Bible, you've confirmed it. Thank you for doing that. Because see, God, he makes prophecies. And those prophecies always come true. Those predictions that come down from above, they always come true. And when you walk past and you mock us, you, you just prove the Bible. That's all you do. You think that you come against the Bible when you mock it, but what you really do is prove it to be true. See, the Bible says in the last days, many scoffers will come being ignorant to the creation and the flood waters that destroyed the world. Don't you understand that you're literally fulfilling that? But you don't have to. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, going down says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor idolaters, nor homosexual, nor effeminate, nor thief, nor covetous, nor reviler, nor extortioner, will inherit the kingdom of God. But it continues to say, and as such were some of you, but you've been washed clean. You can be washed clean. You can be made whole, made new, made into a new creation, made into a new person. All things can be made new by the blood of Jesus Christ. God is calling you to repent and turn to him today in Jesus' name. Want to preach, bro? Uh, no. No? no? You have to understand, there's no possible way that you're going to enter into the kingdom of God with all the sin that you have in your life. It's not going to happen. The only way that you can become born again is to submit yourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. His blood is the only thing that can cleanse you, the only thing that can wash you clean. And what must a man do to be saved? They must repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what is required for salvation. That's it. That's the gospel. Repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. But guess what that belief comes with? It comes with obedience. That's what you're doing. That's exactly what you're doing. Yep, you're just, you're just sitting there talking and talking and talking, but you're not actually following God. You're not listening to God when he speaks to you. Instead, you'd rather mock his word. You'd rather mock his gospel. We tell you today, friends, we want you to be saved. We don't want you to go to hell. But don't you know that Jesus said, not all who say to me, Lord, will enter into my kingdom. Only those who do the will of my Father that is in that kingdom already will enter in. Many will say in the last days, Lord, Lord, haven't we casted out demons for you? Haven't we done mighty works and miracles in your name? And you will profess unto them, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. I don't know you. 
What do you want to hear from God on the day of judgment? Do you want to hear him say, depart from me, I don't know you? Or do you want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the rest of your Lord? And I get it, I get it. We, 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 seem, we seem like so judgmental and angry, but guess what? Our judgments mean nothing compared to God's. God's judgments yield an eternal consequence. Ours are to give you a warning out of love. But one day you're gonna stand before the one who can, who will judge you based on all that you've done and his judgment will yield an eternal consequence. You're going to stand before God and you're gonna to have to answer and give an account for all things that you've done. Well, you should hear yourself think about Jesus and what he did on the cross. You're a disgusting, despicable pervert. You're disgusting, you wicked pervert. I rebuke you, you, you devil, you Satan. I rebuke you, get behind me. You savor the things of, of man, not the things of God. You're, dis, you're, dis, you're despicable. And, and what you need to do is you need to think of yourself on the day of judgment. Do you think you're going to be saying that kind of thing to God? No, you're going to go, ah! That's what you're going to do for all eternity. All eternity. You're going to be screaming, weeping, wailing, and gnashing your teeth. And your conscience is going to be with you, reminding you of all the times that God was long-suffering and merciful and giving you an opportunity to repent, but you chose not to take it. Plug your ears, sinner. And you, I might as well, because guess what? You're, you, you're going to enjoy your life now, but you're going to regret it one day when you stand before God. You're not going to be able to plug your ears when God comes and God returns. When, when the voice of God comes down from above, you're not going to be able to block that out. You're not going to be able to turn that down. You're not going to be able to plug your ears on that. God's voice is going to speak to you audibly one day. You might as well submit to him now while you have time. Don't let these, don't let these false people, what up Caleb? God bless Caleb. Don't let these false people lead you in the wrong direction. Don't let them lead you astray. Don't. That's what sheep, that's what, that's what wolf in sheep's clothing do. They lead you astray. They give you a false gospel. They give you false hope that there really is no hope in. There's no hope in Islam. There's no hope in Buddhism. There's certainly no hope in atheism. There's no hope in agnosticism. There's no hope in Hinduism. There's only hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, my friends. That's it. That's the only thing that gives true hope. Anything else you have is just a, a thought on the wind and it'll be gone, just like your life. What is your life gonna be? It's but a vapor. It's here and then gone. It's passing away. Once it's gone, it's gone. What is your, what is 80 years, 100 years gonna mean in eternity? Eternity. I know you've studied math before. You know what infinity is, the sideways eight? That's eternity. It goes on and on and on and on and on and it never stops. And no matter how much you laugh about it, no matter how much you mock it, it doesn't take it away. Even if I die right now, it doesn't change the fact that this gospel is true. These words I'm speaking mean something. They're true. And, and anything else is meaningless, it's pointless. You might say, oh, there's no God. Prove that there's a God, but guess what? Newsflash, you can't disprove a universal negative. You can't do it. You can't disprove God. You can't do it. You could say all day that you don't believe in God. That doesn't change the fact that he's real. You could say, I don't believe in an 18-wheeler and stand on the highway, splat, and you'll still die. It doesn't, your, your lack of belief in an 18-wheeler does not change the fact that an 18-wheeler exists. And your lack of belief in God does not change the fact that God exists. He's real. In fact, you only exist because God exists. The only way that you could have any sort of assurance that tomorrow will be similar to today is the fact that God exists. You couldn't do science. You couldn't use logic. You couldn't use reason if there was no God. Those things simply would not exist. You see, they're not tangible. You can't see, taste, touch, or smell them, but they're there, they're real. The law of logic exists, whether you believe it or not. And I tell you today, my friends, there's a God of this universe. He cares about you, he loves you, he wants you to be set free and saved and brought back into eternity in the light of God, not in the light of darkness, not in the light of Satan, not in the kingdom of darkness. The principalities of this world want to drag you away from God, but Jesus Christ came, suffered, and died on the cross to bring you back to the Father. Turn to him in Jesus' name today. Amen. Be bold and speak and reach out to me. I can't save myself, but I want to be free, and there's something inside you I need, well there's something deep down inside you I need, 
Yes, there's something in your heart I know I need And I can see it in your eyes I know I need it To come out and preach Preach unto me Tell me the secret to eternity Be bold and speak And reach out to me No, I can't save myself But I want to be free And there's something inside you I need Oh, there's something deep down inside you I need Come out and breathe.